A very good morning to one and all. My name is uh, Leong Ho. Welcome to Mount Carmel BP Church's online service. It is great to be back again to lead worship, and indeed, it is good to be able to worship again with a live congregation in the sanctuary. Hi all to those in the sanctuary, and hi also to all those worshipping at home. Now, to all those in the sanctuary, may I suggest now that you turn around where you are seated and wave at each other to acknowledge each other's presence. Won't you do that? Thank you. To start our service this morning, let us unite our voices and hearts together to sing our opening song, 10,000 Reasons. A very good song to start praising and blessing the Lord, and indeed, a very good song for our hearts and souls now. Let's rise wherever you are to sing this song, 10,000 Reasons. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul, worship His holy. Like never before, oh my soul, I'll worship your holy name. The sun comes up, it's a new day dawning. It's time to sing your song again. Whatever may pass and whatever lies before me Let me be singing when the evening comes Bless the Lord O oh my soul O oh my soul Worship His holy name Sing like never Let us pray. Bless the Lord, O my soul, O my soul. Worship His holy name. Sing like never before, O my soul. I worship Your holy name. Dear Jesus, that's what we want to do, Lord, to bless You and to worship You for our souls. Long to sing praises unto, unto Your holy name. 
May our tired souls be lifted up as we praise you. And may our wounded hearts be healed as we worship you. For it has been long journey as we continue to battle this pandemic. And for some of us, it has been a long night before the sunrise. Walk with us, Lord, for we need your presence. Stay with us, Lord, for we need your guiding hands. May your light shine within our souls as we continue to journey on. And may your love warm our hearts as we march on towards a better tomorrow. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost as it was in the beginning is now and ever shall Thank you. Please be seated. For the responsive scripture reading, I have chosen for us a passage from Romans chapter 5, verses 6 to 11. And this morning, I'm going to read for, for you from the New Living Translation. It is going to be a short passage, so I'm going to read it to you. Romans chapter 5, verse 6. When we were utterly helpless, Christ came at just the right time and died for us sinners. Now, most people would not be willing to die for an upright person, though someone might perhaps be willing to die for a person who is especially good. But God showed His great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. And since we have been made right in God's sight by the blood of Christ, He will certainly save us from God's condemnation. For since our friendship with God was restored by the death of His Son while we were still His enemies. We will certainly be saved through the life of His Son. So now we can rejoice in our wonderful new relationship with God because our Lord Jesus Christ has made us friends of God. The first verse that we had just read this, in this passage speaks of the condition today precisely. We are utterly helpless. We are living in an uncertain time with an uncertain future. The world we are living in is broken and it needs healing desperately. With this backdrop, we need to remember that the la of the last phrase that we just read, that Jesus has made us friends of God, even in this hostile world we live in. And hence, we have hope even though we are utterly helpless. Because Jesus' sacrifice on the cross has made us friends of God. Today, Pastor Timothy Poir is going to speak of another friend of God named Abraham and the sacrifice God had asked Abraham to make. Indeed, the greatest sacrifice is to sacrifice his one and only son, Isaac. It's a fantastic story. And this morning, we are going to sing this story for you. A story of redemption, a story of God's love for us, a story of sacrifice. Please join me together with Philip with this song, Sacrifice. Oh, this must be the hardest hill I've ever climbed. For I must sacrifice you promised son of mine And so I go to worship with you by my side And trust a sacrifice he will provide And though I change 
must now offer you to him who is the giver of all good things and though i cherish you i will now offer you for surely could raise you up again here on this altar father i lay all my dreams and offer back to you this child you've given Oh, son, you must believe he's called us to obey. And by his love, he'll make a better way. And though I cherish you, I must now offer you. To him who is the giver of all good things And though I cherish you I will now offer you For surely he could raise you up again Oh Abraham that I know you fear my name withhold your hand oh Abraham oh faithful man your only son he is not the one behold the ram behold It must have been the hardest thing he'd ever done When God the Father sacrificed his only son The one he most cherished gave his life away and by his love he made a better way and so i cherish you and so i honor you for truly are the giver of all good things and so i cherish So I honor you Your sacrifice is now the King of Kings Jehovah Jireh He has provided The sacrifice of love no man could ever pay and what he requires of you and me even the hardest things your blood oh christ your sacrifice gives me strength to obey Paul, in Romans chapter 12, verse 1, urged and encouraged us to sacrifice our bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. 
for this is our spiritual act of worship. Let us do that right now as we sing our next song, Living Sacrifice. Take my life, a living sacrifice, knowing it's the least that I can do. Make my life, a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to you. I look upon my life and realize at last Within myself there's nothing I can do And yet here I stand to offer all I am And give myself completely, Lord, to you sacrifice knowing it's the least that I can do take my life a living sacrifice holy and acceptable to you I cannot be content until I reach that place how little I have given up to you Lord, break down my will Make my desires your own I long to give my everything to you Take my life A living sacrifice Knowing it's the least that I can do make my life a living sacrifice holy and acceptable to you take my life a living sacrifice knowing it's the least that I can do to you let us pray dear Jesus indeed take our lives living sacrifices unto you that's the least we can do and make our lives living sacrifices holy and acceptable to you remind us O Lord of your great love for us even as we stumble and get disheartened amidst this pandemic. And forgive us of our sins as we forgive those who have sinned against us. Keep us close to your side, Lord, and help us live up to our calling, your living sacrifices. May we not lose heart in this long and dark journey, but continue to have faith in you and to hope in you. And now, we want to worship you with our offering. Accept our offering, Lord, and may it be used to bless others who need it and for the furtherance of your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may give of your tithes and offering in the following ways.
Let us rise for the doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Hello, everybody. Greetings in the most wonderful name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I trust you have found the songs we've sung and the scriptures we've read meaningful and a blessing. Here are the announcements. To prepare our hearts for Christmas, join us in our devotionals for the next two weeks. Through the eyes and preparing for his coming. You'll find them on carmel.sg slash prayer guides. On the last evening of every year, we gather for a watch night service where we testify and praise God for how he has worked in one another's lives. This year, watch night service will be held over Zoom on 31st December at 8 p.m. I'm sure many of us have stories of God's faithfulness despite this year's challenges. So may I encourage as many of us as possible to come together, share openly, share boldly as the Lord leads to encourage one another that it may cause thanksgiving to overflow all to the glory of God. Now from January, our service timings will change. We will have three English worship services each week, Saturday evening, 5.30 p.m., Sunday morning, 9 a.m. and 10.45 a.m. On the first Sundays, the English service will only have the first service as our Mandarin congregation will worship at 10.45 a.m. on these first Sundays. Now, our youths will shift to Saturday afternoons, DCG at 4 p.m., youth service at 5.30 to 6.30 p.m. As for Carmel kids, they will resume in person for primary school only once a month on the first weekend of each month. On all other weekends, Carmel's kids will continue over Zoom. To register for the services and Sunday school, head to carmel.sg slash worship dash together for the links. And finally, before we pray, may I encourage all of us, as many of us as possible, even as Carmel embarks on a church renewal to come for our church prayer meeting. Come once a month. Join us, either the main prayer group or a smaller group just for ladies. And now, let us pray. For unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. Father God, thank you for your word that foretold the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ, even before it happened 2,000 years ago. Indeed, his advent, his coming, has ushered in a new era of hope. In this season of Advent, that began two weeks ago, fill our hearts with joy as we look forward to celebrating Christmas, Emmanuel, God with us, in two weeks' time. May we slow down our tempo of life to reflect and meditate on the significance of what God did in sending his Son to come as man to die on the cross for our sins, suffering humiliation, and pain. May our hearts be moved as we are reminded once again that Christmas 
is very much about God's love and how we as his children who are saved are granted the privilege to transmit that love to others around us. A key way we can do this is by extending invitations to our friends and colleagues who are lost to tune in to our church online Christmas program from the 20th of December onwards. Show us even now, O Lord, who we should be inviting to this program, which many Carmelites have expended time and effort to put together. We know that opening these doors to evangelism will never go to waste as we submit to the drumbeat of God's heart, His timing, His working in the lives of those who hear His message. Father, we confess that Carmelites are not strong in evangelism. This Christmas, Lord, amidst the pandemic, stir our hearts to reach out to the many anxious souls out there as we are reminded to make disciples of all nations. In Advent, we are also reminded that Jesus will come again, this time not as a helpless babe, but as King of kings and Lord of lords. Help us, Lord, to live our lives in the expectation that he may do so any time. May our value systems, our worldviews, our actions be shaped by this expectation. And finally, Lord, this Advent, let us remember the thousands of Christians worldwide who live in fear and distress. Some fear for their very lives. Others are unsure where the next meal will come from. Yet others, unlike us in Singapore, can only worship alone and in secret. They persevere in their faith despite pressure to renounce Christ as Lord and Saviour. O oh, Father God, you know who these dear sisters and brothers in Christ are. We commit each and every one of them into your loving hands now. Please grant them your strength, your peace and wisdom in dealing with their difficult circumstances. And now, dear Lord, please be with us as we partake of your word. Speak to us, O Lord, through our dear brother, Pastor Timothy Poir. In Jesus' most wonderful name, we pray. Amen. A very blessed morning to you, Church. Let us turn our hearts and minds to the Word of God found in John 1, 14-19 and Genesis 22, 1-18. John 1, 14-19 The Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us. We have seen His glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. John testified concerning him. He cried out, saying, This is the one I spoke about when I said, He who comes after me has surpassed me, because he was before me. Out of his fullness we have all received grace, in place of grace already given. For the law was given through Moses, Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, but the one and only Son, who is himself God and is in closest relationship with the Father, has made him known. Now this was John's testimony when the Jewish leaders in Jerusalem sent priests and Levites to ask him who he was. In Genesis 22, 1-18, Sometime later, God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Then God said, take your son, your only son whom you love, Isaac, and go to the region of Moriah. Sacrifice him there as a burnt offering. On a mountain, I will show you. Early the next morning, Abraham got up and loaded his donkey. He took with him two of his servants and his son Isaac. When he had cut enough wood for the burnt offering, he set out for the place God had told him about. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. He said to his servants, Stay here with the donkey, while I and the boy go over there. We will worship 
and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and placed it on his son Isaac, and he himself carried the fire and the knife. As the two of them went on together, Isaac spoke up and said to his father Abraham, Father, yes, my son, Abraham replied. The fire and wood are here, Isaac said. But where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham answered, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. And the two of them went on together. When they reached the place God had told him about, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then he reached out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called out to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Do not lay a hand on the boy, he said. Do not do anything to him. Now I know that you fear God, because you have not withheld from me your son, your only son. Abraham looked up. And there in a ticket, he saw a ram caught by its horn. He went over and took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called that place, the Lord will provide. And to this day, it is said, on the mountain of the Lord, it will be provided. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham from heaven a second time and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will surely bless you and make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as the sand on the seashore. Your descendants will take possessions of the city of their enemies and through your offspring, all nations on earth will be blessed because... You have obeyed me. May God bless the reading of his holy word and bless you too as you listen for God's voice through the preaching of Pastor Timothy Poir on Jesus and Isaac, one and only son. Pastor Timothy Poir is pastor at Mount Horeb Bible Presbyterian Church in Singapore. He is married to Christina and they have two adult sons. He was an aircraft engineer with the Republic of Singapore Air Force before he responded to the Lord's call into ministry. And now, Pastor Timothy Pua. A blessed Christmas, brothers and sisters in the Lord. What a great joy to have to be with you this evening. The word of the Lord says to us that there is a time for every activity. And so now is the time for us to worship God and to engage God's word. His living word. And it is also a season for everything under the sun. And right now, it is the Christmas season. And so we want to bless you uh, in the Lord and to rejoice in this season of Christmas. Today, we are looking into John chapter 1. We want to thank the scripture reading for reading for us. You'll notice that there is a very key word that was found. The Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us. We have seen His glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Now, why is Jesus described by the Apostle John as the one and only Son? Now, this is a very special term in the Greek word. The word is monogenous, all right? My, my, my Greek isn't that good, but this Greek word is very special. According to the lexicon, it tells us that it represents something that is unique, only, one and only, of its kind. And it is kept and used to describe Jesus. Now, a similar word is also found uh, uh, in the Old Testament, all right? And it is in, in Hebrew. But right now in the book of Hebrews chapter 11, it is recorded for us that by faith, Abraham, when tested, when God tested him, offered Isaac as a sacrifice. 
he who had embraced the promises was about to sacrifice his one and only son. Here it is, the same word being used, monogenes. Use of describing Jesus was used to describe Isaac in the New Testament Greek. If you look all the way back to the Old Testament and in Hebrews, a same similar word with that meaning was used. And it is called Yahid, Yahid. And it is referring and all the usages of that time was the same, only unique child. To put it in a longer way, pertaining to a child very special in the eyes of the parents and in that sense, unique. And so today, we want to look into the life of Isaac and Jesus and how they are described in this way as the one and only son. I like um, this Max Lucado in his uh, writing commentary on this particular point. He says that uh, the Greek word for one and only is monogenes, an adjective compounded of monos and genes, species, race, family, offspring and kind. When used in the Bible, one and only almost always describes a parent and child relationship. It also highlights the particular relationship between Jesus and God. Read this with me if you can. Though God is the father of all humanity, Jesus alone is the monogenetic son of God. Because only Christ has God's genes or genetic makeup. This is how special it is. Okay, now let us go into the Old Testament, Genesis chapter 22, and pick up from there some lessons that God has for us. Today, we're going to look at three points, three areas that God wants us to learn about Jesus. Number one, God's promised one and only son. Number two, God's providential lamb of atonement. Number three, God's prophecy of eternal life blessings. And a very key phrase for us or key verse for us to take heart and that is John 3 16 for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but to save the world through him praise the Lord In Genesis chapter 22, verse 1, which is recorded for us, sometime later, God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, here I am, he replied. This sometime later is how long, you know, not? At this point, just to consolidate for you, Abraham is about 115 years old. 115 years old. When God called Abraham to go to Canaan, he was 75 years old. Yes, 75 years old. And God says, leave everything. Leave your land, leave your family and follow me to where I will show you. And so he left his homeland for the land of Canaan, for the land that God wants to show him and bless him. He and the wife Sarah left, 75 years old. And by this time, he is 115 years old. And guess what did God say? Verse 2. Then God said, Take your son, your only son, whom you love, Isaac, and go to the region of Moriah. Sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on a mountain. I will show you. Were you... Do that for your son, your only son. If you were to look at all the background passages and events that has passed, you know how precious Isaac is to Abraham. In nature fact, they were way beyond the possibility of having a child. In the scripture recorded for us that Abraham and Sarah laughed. Yeah, how can 
a son be born to a man 100 years old and a wife 90 years old. The wife, Sarah, was barren all the days of her life. And so that is how precious the son is. And now God says, sacrifice him. And what did this man of faith do? The scripture tells us that he wake up the next morning, he got up, he loaded his donkey, he took him with him, two of his servants and his son Isaac, and he began to cut enough wood for the burnt offering. He set out for the place God had told him about. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. He said to his servants, stay here with the donkey, and I and the boy will go over there. We will, what will we do? We will worship, and then we will come back. What a man of obedience. Not only was he given a task, an instruction, that is beyond our imagination, but yet this man prepared the task that was given to him. What about Jesus? What about Jesus? This is a very nice uh, picture for you to just sense that, that tension, the pain, the struggles that Abraham has as he walked with Isaac to the mount where he was to sacrifice his one and only son. Abraham struggled with the instruction of God. So is Jesus as he struggles in the presence of God the Father. John chapter 1, verses 14 and 18 tells us that the Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us. We have seen His glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. No one has ever seen God, but the one and only Son, who is Himself God and is in closest relationship with the Father, has made Him known. And what happened, He withdrew. The Scripture tells us that Jesus, in His most painful moment, was His prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane. In Luke chapter 22, verses 41 to 44, it's recorded for us that He withdrew about the stones throw beyond them. He knelt down and he prayed. Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me. Yet not my will, but yours be done. 44, verse 44 tells us that he prayed more earnestly and his sweat was like blood dripping out of his body, falling to the ground. My dear brothers and sisters, God gave us His one and only Son to become a sacrifice for you and for me. What a sacrifice that God took upon Himself. Let us move on to look at the second lesson or area for us to consider. Number two, God's providential Lamb of Atonement. Genesis 22 continue to record it for us, to record for us from verse 7 to 14. As the two of them went on together, now Abraham and Isaac, okay? As he tells the servant to just wait there, they will go worship the Lord and they will come back. Isaac spoke up and said to his father, Abraham, he says, Father, yes, my son, Abraham replied, the fire and the wood are here. Isaac said, But where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham answered, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. And the two of them went on. We take a moment to think about this. What does the lamb of God or the lamb represent? In the Old Testament, God has instructed the people of Israel that they are to bring a lamb to sacrifice as a burnt offering. And the lamb is some kind of a substitute for the wrongs that they do. And this instruction and this way of atonement was passed down from Adam all the way until this generation. 
And so the lamb was a very serious act of sacrifice for atonement of our sins. And when they reached the place, God had told him about Abraham built an altar there and began to arrange the wood on it. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then he reached out his hand and took the knife and was about to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called out to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham. The scripture tells us that he says, Here I am, he replied. Do not lay a hand on the boy. Do not do anything to him. Now I know that you fear God. Because you have not withheld from me your son, your only son. What a demonstration of obedience. What a demonstration of God's love and hearing that he shouted out to Abraham that enough, I now know where your heart is. And when Abraham looked up, the scripture recorded for us, he saw a ram caught in the thicket. And so Abraham called the place, the Lord will provide. My dear brothers and sisters, Jesus is the Lamb of God. Here in John chapter 1, 29 to 30, the scripture says the next day, John saw Jesus coming towards him. This John is John the Baptist. Eh? And he says, look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Jesus is that Lamb of God that God has prepared himself to come and become that atoning sacrifice for you and for me and for the whole world. What a similarity and an event that tells us about Jesus. So Abraham and Isaac in Genesis 22 carries so much lessons. Later on, when Peter wrote to the church, he mentioned the same thing again. He says that for you know that it, is, it was not with perishable things such as silver or gold that you were redeemed from the empty way of life handed down to you from your ancestors, but with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish and defect. He was chosen before the creation of the world, but has revealed in these last times for your sake. My dear brothers and sisters, who is Jesus? He is the one and only Son of God. He is the one and only Lamb of God that was sufficient for the salvation of all who turn to him and accept him as Lord and Saviour. So Christmas is not just about gifts, about toys, about sweets, about barbecue. It is more than all these things. It centres upon Jesus, the one and only Son of God, the one and only Lamb of God. A.W. Tozer, that most of us know him well, said well. He says, Faith is not a once-done act, but a continuous gaze of the heart at the true in God. Believing then is directing the heart's attention to Jesus. It is lifting the mind to behold the Lamb of God and never ceasing that beholding for the rest of our lives. Do not turn your eyes to toys and fight over things that you want to get for Christmas. You have Jesus. And so we are to continuously behold the Lamb of God whose love for us is beyond our understanding. Praise God. Third lesson that we have, God's prophecy of eternal life blessings. In Genesis 22, verses 1 to 18, section and especially section, the Lord says to Abraham, 
the angel of the Lord called to Abraham from heaven a second time and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will surely bless you and make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as the sand on the seashore. Your descendants will take possession of the cities of their enemies. Mark verse 18. And through your offspring, all nations on earth will be blessed because you have obeyed me. My dear brothers and sisters, my dear friends, not only did God speak to us through the life of Abraham, Isaac, but in it, God continues His blessing of eternal life and eternal blessing for generations to come. Let us now turn and look at Jesus, God's prophecy of eternal life blessings. John chapter 3, verses 16. For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son, that whoever believes in Him shall not perish but have eternal life. Yes, whoever, which country you come from, which race you come from, which status you come from, God now presents to you His one and only Son, Jesus Christ, that when you believe in Him and accept Him as your Lord and Saviour, you shall not perish, but have eternal life. This was a blessing all the way from Genesis Verse 17, For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through Him. Many a times we struggle. We face a lot of condemnation. And so we are thinking very heavily on our mind. What would God do with me? But here, the Lord says He sent His Son not to condemn you, but to save you. And in verse 18, whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. So here is a very serious position that Jesus has presented himself to you and to me. One of eternal life, one of eternal death. What would you choose? A very wonderful uh, Christmas song, a hallelujah Christmas, a beautiful song that is sung during this season. The last stanza says, I know you came to rescue me. This baby boy could grow to be a man and one day die for me and you. My sins could drive the nails in you. That rugged cross was my cross too. Still every breath you drew was hallelujah, hallelujah, and hallelujah. We thank the Lord. Jesus and Isaac, one and only son. The three lessons that we learn, learn so much. God's promise, one and only son. God's providential lamb of atonement, God's prophecy of eternal life blessings. May the Lord bless you. Let us pray. Dear God, we thank you so much for your love towards us in giving yourself to us. We pray, O oh Lord, that as we go into this Christmas season, we come into your presence in worship, and in thanksgiving. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Reflection questions. Number one, God has given us His one and only Son, Jesus, and save us. Now what would you give this Christmas to save a soul from sin and a taste of God's redeeming love in Christ? Question two, how can you and your family make a Christmas gift that carries the message of God's salvation love in Jesus Christ? A gift 
for your grandparents, a gift for your classmates, and a gift for your colleagues. Thank you, Pastor Timothy, for that uh, sermon. And now for our closing song, let us sing a Christmas carol to remember the birth of our Lord Jesus in this Christmas season, O Holy Night. O Holy Night, the stars are brightly shining it is the night of the dear Saviour's birth. Long lay the world in sin and error pining, till He appeared and the soul felt its worth. A thrill of hope The weary world rejoices For yonder breaks A new and glorious morn Fall on your knees Oh, hear the angel's voice For the slave is our brother And in his name all oppression shall cease Sweet hymns of joy In grateful chorus raise me Let all within 
kingdoms praise his holy name christ is the lord let ever ever praise Let us receive the benediction. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen. 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 God bless. See you the next Lord's Day. When we got the news, when uh, Joe thought, I mean, like, we went in, eh? Mm -hmm. And he had the bleed. Um, Before, I mean, after that MRI, right? The doctor kind of like broke the news to us that he had a tumor, likely and asked whether we had young kids and how we're going to cope with that and my first thought was God, please help me because how am I going to cope if that is without Him and we didn't know what the future holds